Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. Now we are covering chapter 5, Adjust and Troubleshoot Single Area or SPF. We are moving to um, covering Packet Tracer. We just completed Packet Tracer 5112, 5135. Now we're going to move to Packet Tracer 5157, Configuring OSPF Advanced Features Instructions. Um, okay, so. Um, yeah, get rid of that. That's the old one. Right. And let me open the packet tracer. While the packet tracer is opening, let's have a look at the objectives. So objectives is to modify OSPF default settings and verify connectivity. In this scenario, OSPF is already configured on all end devices. Com currently have a full connectivity. So end devices have connectivity, OSPF is being configured. You will modify the default OSPF routing configuration by changing hello and dead timers, adjusting the bandwidth of the link and enable OSPF authentication. Then we will verify the connectivity has been restored on all devices. So first, mo uh, modify part one, modify OSPF default settings. Test connectivity between all end devices. Before modifying OSPF settings, verify that all PCs can ping the web server and each other. Okay. So if I just move this packet tracer to the right here, right. So PC one should be able to ping the web server. So let's have a look. Desktop, command prompt, ping 64100.1.2. Okay. Can we ping it? Yes, we can. PC two. Ping 64.100.1.2. Yep. And let's see for PC3. Ping 64.100.1.2. Yeah, you can ping it. So, do IP config here. Can PC1 ping PC3? So, ping 192.168.1.2. That's the IP address for PC3. What about PC2? IP config 172.16.2.2. So ping 172.16.2.2. Yep. All the PCs can ping. So let's try this as well. Ping 172.16.2.2. Yeah. Okay. That is verified that everybody can ping each other. PCs can ping the web servers and the PCs can ping each other as well. Adjust the hello and dead timers between router 1 and router 2. So router 1 and router 2, the hello timers, we want to adjust them on serial 00. So let me just, again, the fonts, yeah, font state at that time, that's good. Okay, so if I go to router 1 and say enable, config t interface interface s0 zero, zero, zero. that's between router 1 and router 2 so ip ospf hello interval 15 seconds ip ospf dead interval every 6 seconds there should be a gap there ah. ip ospf ip ospf all right no no ospf the hello and dead interval has to match. So if I go to router 2 and say enable, show IP OSPF neighbor, now you can see in 7 seconds I'm going to lose connection to router 1. Let's try again. 1 second, done. I just lost the relationship towards router 1. So if I repeat, I only got 192.68.10.10, which is the router ID of router 3 as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now, after a short period of time, the OSPF connection with router 2 will fail. Both sides of the connection need to have the same timers in order to the JCC to be maintained. We need to adjust the timers on router 2. So I have to go to router 2 and adjust the same timers. So config T, interface S000, so 0, IP, OSPF, Hello, hello interval, 
I think it was 15, was it 15? Yeah. Interval. Interval, no, interface. Interval, 15. IP, OSPF, dead. Dead interval, 60. Okay, after a few seconds, we will get the relationship. Again, adjacency with router 1. I show IP, OSPF, neighbor. We just got it. Just as I press the enter, loading to neighbor. Okay, adjust the bandwidth on setting on R1. Trace the path between PC and the web server located. Notice that the path from PC1 to the web server routed through router 2. OSPF prefers the lowest cost path. Okay, so let's do the trace from PC1 says so let's go to PC1 from PC1 to the web server on the PC we need tracer tracer to 64.100.1.2 so it's going towards 172.16.11 that's the first hop that's probably my gateway yep that's my gateway then it's going 172.16.3.2 that's the router 2 then it's going to the cloud 209.165 and then it's getting to the internet so it's, the packet is coming this way going to router 2 and then well, fastest on router 1 0, 0, 0, set the bandwidth to 64 kilobits per second this does not change the actual speed only the metric that OSPF forces on NOR1 to calculate so for example, if you say show IP OSPF interface brief. Ah, it's not left mouse. Show IP OSPF interface. Yeah. Okay, so the interface on S0, which is the interface is this? S0, 0, 0, all zeros. Interface S0, 0. zero. The cost here is 64. I'm looking at this because it's usually down here. Yeah. Uh, cost is 64. So now, if we change the bandwidth, now it's not going to affect the speed, but it's going to affect how much does this cost. For example, so we go to interface config t interface uh, s000 and say bandwidth 64 and. Now show IP interface, show IP OSPF interface brief is a really useful command to just see it brief that information. But now you can see the interface is 1,562 the cost. So the packet to the destination is going to be higher. So if I say show show IP root OSPF, now to the destination. Okay, let's have a look at the let's have a look at the packet, the path the packets are taking. Because they're not showing in the packet tracer. Yet. Okay, so tracer. But now, you see, if I compare 172.16.11, that's my gateway. That's root to 2, 170.16.32. Right, so let's just show IP interface brief. Yeah, 172, 16.32. It went to the serial zero zero of router two, but now it's different. It's going towards our gateway, and then it's going to router three. So if I go to router three and say show IP interface brief, now it's going towards router three. As you can see there, ten six one nine two one six eight ten six. It's this here one nine two one six eight ten six. Then it's going like this, it's package coming this way, it's going towards R3, and then towards router 2, and then to destination. Because this link, we change the bandwidth to be very low. Um, as far as OSPF is concerned, it says, okay, well, that's very low, so I'm going to go this way, to destination. Right, so trace the path between PC and the web server, and notice the path 
from PC is going to go towards router 3 because it's got lower cost. Alright, part 4 is uh, enable OSPF authentication on all serial interfaces. So we can enable authentication just on the serial, for example, between 0, 0, 0, 0 router 1 and router 2. Or we can have enable authentication for all area, for area 0 for example. And then the keys can be bit, can be different. So uh, this in the serial the interface between router 1 and 2 can have a different key, as long as they match the neighbor's key. But this key between router 1 and 3 can have a different key. So for example, that's what we're going to do. So we go to router 1 and we say, um, first of all, router OSPF1. And then we say interface, I would just say um, area 0, area 0, authentication, message digest. Then we go to the interface, 0000, IP, OSPF, message digest, key 1, MD5, R1, to R2. Now we're not going to have a neighbors after we have enabled the router 2 after the dead timer. So once the day timer, dead timer expires, router 1 and router 2 is not going to be any more neighbors. So we have to actually go to uh, that router 2 and enable. You see, if I go to router 2 now and do, do show IP OSPF neighbors, I don't have a neighbor. Uh, hold on, the timer here is, is still running. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to lose my neighbor towards router 1. Last router one. So to enable, I have to go to the interface towards router one and say IP OSPF message digest key one MD5 and the key is one one to R2. Then I'm gonna get my neighbor. Um, here there should be a gap. Then I'm gonna do the same for router between router one and router three. So Okay, did I get the neighbor back? Oh, router OSPF 1, area 0, authentication, message digest. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Yeah, initializing. Yeah, we got the neighbor now. Straight from initializing. We didn't see two way or anything. Just going to full. Right, so we go to router 1 now, and we do the same configuration towards router 3, but we change the key. So router 1 and router 3 is going to have R1 and R3, that's going to be the key between router 1 and router 3. Right, so router 1, interface S001, IP OSPF, message digest key 2 now. Well, I like to change the keys, but here it says you can use, still use the one. Okay, message is just one. MD5, R1 to R3. I'll do the same thing on router 3. So go to router 3. So enable, config T, uh, router OSPF1, authentication and area 0. Zero authentication message digest and then interface S000 that's towards router 1 IP OSPF oh, message digest key key 1 MD5 and the key was R1 to R3 and I'm going to do one for R1 uh, R3 and R2 so interface S001 and the key here is going to be R2 to R3. Then do the same thing for router 2. So go to config T, interface, 0001, IP, OSPF, authentication, message that is key, 1, MD5, R2 to R3. Right. So if I could just right, recap. We are enabling the OSPF authentication for the whole area. That's area zero. Now the key between the R1 and R2 is the key is R1 hyphen R2. 
the key between R1 and R3 is hi R1 hyphen R3 and R2 and R3 R2 to R3 so if I for example let's have a look PC1 and show run for example the key here between router 1 and router 2 is R1 or R2 between router 1 and router 3 is R1 to R3 right and we do for router 2 for example let's go to router 2 and show run so the key between router 1 and router 2 is R1 R2 and router 2 and router 3 is R2 R3 see the key for per serial interface they don't have to be exact the same you can, you can have a different secret so that, that will increase this, uh, security okay so before we could ping from PC1 we could ping the web server so now we're gonna try again so let's move a little bit ping 64.100.1.2 Okay, excellent. We can still ping this web server, even though now we are having authentication. So R1, R2, uh, ping 64.100.1.2. Yeah. And 3, you can 3 ping it. Ping 64.100.1.2. Yeah. Trace it. 64.100.1.2 Yeah, we're still going towards router 1, router 3, then router 2, and then to the server. Okay, um, I think we're done. Let's just go and check. Yep, check results. Everything is completed. Okay, thank you very much for watching. This has been a 3 cross Nishi demonstrating you on this packet tracer 5157 configuring OSPF advanced features. Thank you very much and see you in the future video.